again. Welcome to our General Physics 2 Learning Journey. We are now in Week 3. Let us continue our academic moment as we ask the Lord for His blessings. We pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of grace, worship and praise your holy name. This moment, we will continue to study and acquire new knowledge. Do you bless your students with witty brain to think fast and an inquiring mind to be curious on whatever knowledge they will learn today. I ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. The name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello once again. I am your subject teacher and here are my contact details if you need it. Feel free to communicate respectfully. Here are the things that we discussed last meeting. Let us recall them. Magnetism is the ability of a magnetic material to attract other magnetic materials. Poles are portions in magnet, usually near the ends where the magnetic force of attraction is greatest. Like poles repel, and like poles attract. Monopoles do not exist. There are two main theories of magnetism. First, atoms arrange themselves into magnetic domains. And, Magnetism results from moving and spinning electrons. Moving charges produce a magnetic field. Electric current, which consists of moving charges, produce magnetic field. And lastly, right hand rule is used to determine the direction of the magnetic field. Hello? Before we proceed to our new lesson, let us have a teaser game entitled Guess the Sign. So I have here a picture of the said scientist with his contributions in the field of science. Here is your clue. This is his surname. It is a 8, 7, 7 letter word that starts with letter F, with letter A, and ends with letter Y. So I will give you 5 seconds to guess the name of the scientist. One, two, three, four, five. So the name of the scientist is, I did check your answer, Faraday. So did you guess the scientist correctly? Very good. So here is some trivia for Faraday or Michael Faraday. Michael Faraday came from a poor family. He had only basic education. At an early age of 13, he worked as an errand boy and later a bookbinder to help his family. He educated himself by reading the book he banged. His sacrifices paid off. He is now considered one of the greatest scientists of all time. He had several contributions in the field of chemistry and physics such as the liquefaction of chlorine and ammonia gas. The discovery of benzene his loss on electrolysis, Faraday cage, electromagnetic induction, and diamagnetism. Albert Einstein regarded Faraday as one of his personal heroes. He kept a photo of Faraday in his office for inspiration. So somehow, our lesson for today will be uh, some concepts discovered by Michael Faraday. So let's go! Today's lesson is all about magnetic flux and electromagnetic induction. Are you ready to know more about this topic? Let us learn together. Hello! Here are our learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to first define magnetic flux and electromagnetic induction. Second, explain Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Third, solve problems on magnetic flux, electromagnetic induction, and Faraday's law. Lastly, imbibe the value of patience and perseverance in learning. The key terms that we will encounter along the learning journey. Magnetic flux, electromagnetic induction, Faraday's law. First, let us talk about magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is a measurement of the total magnetic field 
which passes through a given area. So, to start with, in 1820, Hans Christian Ørsted discovered the current ring wire conductor produces a magnetic field. Also, in 1831, Michael Faraday carried out experiments to prove that the reverse of what Ørsted discovered was also true magnetism can produce electricity. As Ørsted and Faraday were the first persons to conduct experiments involving electromagnetism. In continuation, magnetic flux is very much the same with electric flux. It's what we did, we had as the starter. This is defined as the number of field lines that passes through a surface. The product of magnetic field and area vector is the formula for magnetic flux. In uh, equation, magnetic flux is the sum of the magnetic field and the area vector. And angle is present, it is magnetic field times the area vector cosine the angle. In continuation, where the angle theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the area vector. Magnetic flux is a scalar quantity expressed in Weber or WB. Note that 1 tesla per meter square or 1 tesla meter square is equal to 1 Weber. Okay? And uh, furthermore, Gauss law of for magnetism states that Gauss law for electrostatic states that electric flux through a surface is proportional to the total electric charge enclosed by the surface. In the same manner, total magnetic flux through a closed surface is proportional to the magnetic charge enclosed by the surface so there is a law stating for electrostatics and there is a law stating for magnetic flux also and it is the Gauss law okay however no monopole is found exist pole poles always come as type so there is no existing one pole to electrostatic uh, no in electrostatic, there is a monopole. However, in magnetism, there is always um, two poles or dipoles. Okay? And in continuation, in addition, magnetic field lines form closed loops that is very field line that enters always exits through the surface. Therefore, the magnetic flux through a closed surface is always zero. This statement is called the Gauss law for magnetism.
So this time, let us apply your knowledge from our previous topic on this situation. Rectangular surface of length 3.25 cm and width of 5.25 cm lies on the XZ plane at axis Y is equal to 0. What is the flux or magnetic flux through this surface due to a uniform magnetic field of 0.65 Tesla directed 60 degrees from the positive x-axis. So let us uh, solve this problem together and learn with me. So if there are questions after this discussion, let us, uh, you can uh, message me through our GCA. Okay, let's go. Okay, so as always, we will use the Greca method in solving physics problems. It stands for given, required, equation, complete solution with unit cancellation, and answer in sentence form. This will be also our guide in doing our practice exercises later on. So let's digest the sample problem. So what are the given uh, quantities. So we have length which is 3.25 centimeters and we will convert it to meters. The conversion will be 0 0.0325 meters and the width which is 5.25 centimeters. The conversion will be 0 0.0525 meters and the magnetic field, the magnitude of the magnetic field is 0.65 Tesla at 60 degrees from the positive x-axis. So you can refer to your book at page 167 for the illustration. Required, we are computing for the magnetic flux. The equation for the magnetic flux will be the dot product of magnetic field and the area cosine theta or the angle between them. Okay? For the complete solution with unit cancellation, first we compute for the area of the rectangular surface. So the formula for the area of the rectangular surface is length times width. So substitute the given values. So we have 0 0.0325 meters times 0 0.0525 meters. So input in your calculator, the answer is 1.0. 70625 times 10 to the negative 3 meter squared. Okay, so did you get the same answer? So let's proceed. Now we compute for the magnetic flux. The normal to the surface is along the positive y axis as shown in your book at page 167. The angle theta between the normal to the flux and the magnetic field should be computed by. Uh, subtracting 90 degrees by 60 degrees, which is the given. So the answer is 30 degrees. Therefore, using our magnetic flux formula, we substitute the values. So we have 0.65 Tesla times 1.70625 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared cosine 30 degrees. So the answer is 9.605 times 10 to the negative 4 tesla meter squared. 1 tesla meter squared is equivalent to 1 Weber. So 9.605 times 10 to the negative 4 Weber is the answer. So did you arrive at the same answer? Try to compute it also on your own calculator. Okay? And now the answer. The magnetic flux through the rectangular surface due to a uniform magnetic field is 9.605 times 10 to the negative 4 Weber. So if there are any clarifications that you want to raise, you can message our class GC during our class time. Okay? Okay, so after following our sample problem on the said topic, now this is your time to answer our problem set or problem which says 
rectangular surface of length 3.25 cm and width 5.25 cm lies on the xy plane at axis z is equal to 0. What is the flux through this surface due to a magnetic field of 0.65 tesla directed along the positive z axis? So solve this problem on your notebook and you can ask clarifications, difficulties in our GCAP during our test time. So do not hesitate to ask some questions. Okay, you can do it. Now, we proceed to electromagnetic induction. Electromagnetic or magnetic induction is the production of an electromotive force across an electrical conductor in a changing magnetic field. Let us learn more about this together. Okay, so I hope you had a fruitful and meaningful learning from our first discussion on magnetic flux. So let us now proceed to electromagnetic discussion. The process of producing induced electromotive force due to a charge in magnetic flux is called electromagnetic induction. Faraday or Michael Faraday conducted an experiment where he found out that there is an induced voltage whenever there is a relative motion between the conductor and the magnet. In other words, the electric field is induced only when magnetic field B is changing. Okay? In connection, Faraday's law states that the induced electromotive force in a closed loop is equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux through the loop. In a statement, electromotive force is the change in magnetic field over time. Negative sign denotes Lenz law. If the number of turns of the coil was given, it states that negative and or the number of turns of the coil change in magnetic field over change in Sample problem. So this is now your time to follow learning with me to answer sample problem about Faraday's law. Problem reads: A circular loop of wire of radius 0.25 meter is exposed to an external magnetic field that is perpendicular to the plane of the loop. For a time, the magnetic field decreases at a rate of 0.025 tesla per second. What is the magnitude of the induced electromotive force in the loop? So we will use the Greca method in solving the problem. So follow with me. Okay, so let's uh, solve the problem together. As always, we will use the Greca method in solving physics problems. It stands for given required equation, complete solution with unit cancellation, and answer in sentence form. This will be also your guide in doing your practice exercises later on. So first, uh, the radius of the loop is 0.25 meters. And the magnetic field decreases at a rate of 0.025 tesla per second. 
seconds, the negative sign denotes that the field is decreasing. So, change of magnetic field over change of time is negative 0.025 tesla per second. So, required, we are looking for the magnitude of the induced electromotive force. So, equation, so we will use the application of the Faraday's law. So, Faraday formulated his law of electromagnetic induction based on his experiment. So, the law states that the induced electromotive force in a closed loop is equal to the rate of change of magnetic flux through the loop. So, in symbols or in equation, change of magnetic flux over change in time. So, negative means uh, it is a decreasing rate. Okay? So, complete solution with unit cancellation. So, computing for the area of the loop using uh, the formula pi r squared. So, pi r squared, substituting the radius which is 0.25 meters squared. So, input in your calculator, the area of the loop, circular loop is 0 0.196 meters squared or rounded to 0.20 meter squared. Okay? And since the magnetic field is perpendicular to the plane of the loop, the angle between the normal to the place of the loop and magnetic field is zero. Thus, using Faraday's law equation, negative change in magnetic flux over change in time. So, magnetic flux is equivalent to the dot product of the magnetic field and area cosine theta. But, we isolate change in magnetic field and change in time. So, the resulting formula will now be negative uh, area cosine theta and our relationship which is change of magnetic field over change in time. Moreover, uh, we all know that uh, change of magnetic field over change in time is negative 0.025 tesla per second. So, substituting also the area that we computed a while ago, we have 0 0.196 meters squared cosine 0. So, input in your own calculator to arrive with the answer, which is 4.9 times 10 to the negative 3 volts. So, try to compute it and input in your own calculator. Did you get the same? Okay. And, and lastly, the magnitude of the induced electromotive force in the loop is 4.9 times 10 to the negative 3 volts. I hope that you got the same answer also as we discussed it. Okay? Okay, so this is now your time to answer some practice exercises about the topic. Problem reads Closely one. 0.20 meter times 0.20 meter square coil of 100 turns is exposed to an external magnetic field of 0.74 tesla that is perpendicular to the plane of the coil. The coil is then rotated for 10 seconds until it makes 60 degrees with the magnetic field. Find the average induced electromotic force during the 10 seconds in interval. So enough time will be given for you after our lesson video to answer the following problem. Ask or submit the problem in our SMU LMS. And always learn how to communicate with me during our class time. Okay? So thank you very much for your participation. After learning about electromagnetic induction, there are two important devices that operate on the principle of electromagnetic induction, such as the generator and the motor. A generator is a device that converts mechanical energy to electrical energy in its simplest form. A generator is a coil of N or the number of turns loops rotating in a magnetic field. So if you have a generator at home, it is an application of electromagnetic induction.
Moreover, we have also a motor. A motor is a generator operating in reverse. It changes electrical energy to mechanical energy as the coil in the motor rotates. Changing magnetic flux through it induces an electromotic force to reduce the current. So this is a reverse of a generator that we had uh, in our first slide. Or prior slide. Another application of electromagnetic induction is the transformer. A transformer consists of two independent coils, primary and secondary, widened upon an iron core. A transformer may be set up for step one, depending on the number of turns in the primary and in the secondary coils. It either increases or decreases an input voltage. So these three are some practical ex examples of electromagnetic induction phenomena. In connection to our discussion today, some trivia that I want to share is Did you know that a credit card must be swiped rather than be held motionless in a card reader slot? Why? When swiped, the motion of the card induces an electromotive force or current which can decode the information at the back of the card. So the use of credit card is an application of uh, electromotive force or the electromagnetic induction. Okay? So now you know. So hello once again. So here is a short recap of what we discussed this meeting. First, Electromagnetic induction is the process of inducing a voltage or current by a change in magnetic flux. Second, magnetic flux is the number of field lines that passes through a surface. It is defined as the dot product of magnetic field B and area vector A. Faraday's law states that the induced voltage is equal to the rate of change of the magnetic flux. Lastly, Faraday's law is applied in the operation of a generator, a motor, and a transformer. If there are any questions, difficulties, or clarifications that you want to be answered, feel free to message our class GCAP during our class time. Okay? Hello once more, as we continue to learn in this new normal, let us be guided with this quote by Michael Faraday saying, Nothing is too wonderful to be true, consistent with the law of nature. In relation to our lesson, how will you create a strong force that will make a difference in your community? You can put your insight in the attendance check of your SMU Bless account. Let us have some reminders. Please be reminded with our learning schedule next week. On April 4 to 8, 2022, it will be your quiz 1 slash performance task. Quiz coverage will be combination of resistors, Kirchhoff's law, fundamentals of magnetism, magnetic flux, and electromagnetic induction. And on April 7 to 15, 2022, 
is the observance of Holy Week. Thus, there will be no classes on the, the set uh, period. And now, let us ask the Lord for His blessings as we have our closing prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Almighty God, we started this class with you, and we are closing it with you. Thank you for making this learning interaction a success. We could not have done it without you, because many are our plans, but it is you who establishes them. May the things we have learned today stir our hearts and may we put them into action. May what we have learned impact our lives, families, friends, and the rest of the world positively. In Jesus' name, we believe and pray. Amen. May the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello? The mode of submission of your outputs, you can communicate with me through our FB Messenger or our class GCAP. Submit your practice exercises and other academic requirements in the SMU as on time. Feel free to keep in touch always. May Mary, our mother and patroness, inspire you always. God bless and keep safe always. See you in our synchronous meeting. Bye!